So let us go over to our next thing. Uh, another thing that I prepared here is a little mesh and an animation for a door. At least my Maya scene in the world. And there's one object here that is supposed to be the collision. It's called collision. This is a this is a door model from Pirates of New Horizons. Maybe you've seen it in our prototype. So what I want is now, if I approach this door, I want it to slide open to the top. I have an animation that is called opening and one that is called closing. And they do exactly what you think they do. So I'm gonna there's actually already an empty transform in here, which is useful. So I'm going to attach my trigger. And I'm going to attach a script that is called animation queue. What animation queue does is it will tell an object of your choice that has one of those Unity animation components on it which animations to play. And I want it to play when the player enters the trigger. And why the uh, and here it's determined that it is the player. By default, it will assume that you want the player. Actually, let me check that my player prefab is actually tagged as player. Yes, it is. So on trigger enter the outgoing target, the door prefab will play an animation. But which animation? I want opening see if this works. And it does. But now, if I'm walking away from this thing, I kind of want it to close again. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach another animation queue here. Set it up in the same way. Outgoing target is the door. Saying closing. And this time, it's not trigger enter, it's trigger exit. And both of these actions are repeatable. Now the door will open when I approach it, and it will close when I walk away. But there's still kind of something missing. This doesn't really feel right. I think what I want is when the door slams to the ground, I want a sound and I want a particle effect. So, how am I going to do that? I want to specify a location where I want my particle effect to be. This is where I want my particle effect to be. And now I'm gonna attach one more of these spawner scripts to our door. Let's say when the player leaves and the, sto uh, the door comes sliding down, I wanna spawn a dust particle effect which actually imported together with my door. and I want it to spawn at the apex location. This is also repeatable. And I think we're good to go here. <coughs> Alright, that works. But it's Showing up too early. So as soon as I'm leaving and the animation starts playing, the smoke is already coming. Like it should obviously only be emitted when the door actually hits the ground. So it needs a little bit of a delay. And we can accommodate for that as well with no, not the cooldown time, but what is it? Delay. Here we go. Uh, I think quarter of a second should be enough. Oh, 
Ah, it's a little bit too late. Let's make it a point two. So what's interesting here is I get this feeling that every time I click to play up in the top <coughs> corner, my rocket launcher fires once. Or is it? No, it's once we still have a rocket in the scene. That's the problem. I thought the actual the, the press uh, on the play button actually results in fire one to be caught. <coughs> All right, that door will open and close. Oops. Let me quickly get rid of this screen space amine occlusion effect. It's kind of annoying me. Keeping your seats clean is important. <coughs> right. One more script I want to show you is um, the game object toggle or the render toggle. This is uh, this is one of the single most useful scripts I found uh, in the development of our prototype for Pirates of New Horizons. Uh, you can achieve almost anything by turning stuff on and off. And this is exactly what the render toggle and game object toggle do. The game object toggle basically ticks this checkbox and turns an object on and off. And the render toggle will, on any object that has a mesh renderer, it will toggle this checkbox and make stuff invisible or visible. The difference between the two is like any other like uh, component that might be attached to a, an object like a script or like a collider will also be deactivated if you untick this one. So if you only want to make stuff invisible, use the render toggle. And if you want to like eradicate the entire functionality of this object, then use this one, uh, the game object toggle. Okay. So what I want now is have these little like uh, additive glow sprites here only show up if the door is actually open so by default everything is once again set to only react to when the player is entering the trigger and the outgoing target is uh, the light fix these guys and I think by default since the door is closed it should be off and once again it's repeatable we need trigger when player is inside and actually here yeah, I can show you something fairly neat you can also like have two incoming types now it will react to enter and exit and rather than just turning it always on you can say toggle so I spare myself attaching two scripts here lights are on lights are off lights are on lights are off but now I'm going to show you I don't know if you guys uh, know the Metroid games or Shadow Complex or any of these uh, I think the subgenre is called Metroidvania where there's always like these colored doors that are only opening if you like fire at them with specific weapons so let's say our little rocket here that we can fire into the world only he is supposed to be able to open this door uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tag. I'm going to call it rocket. And the rocket is going to get this tag. And then I'm going to go to my components. I'm going to say it's not the trigger, uh, the player anymore that is supposed to like open this door. It is the rocket. Actually, I don't think I want it to close if the rocket leaves. I don't. I think it. I just want the door to stay open. So, gonna remove a little bit of functionality here, and I think it would be best in this case actually not to use proximity, but to kind of use a box collider that actually represents the shape of the door Rocket. Next to 
rocket. And our rocket is tagged, and I think we're good to go here. This door does not react to me anymore. Actually, it's kind of curious. I can walk through it. This is not so cool. I think this thing also needs a box collider. Right, so now we have a door that I cannot pass through. But I believe my trusty rocket launcher can open this door. Oh, yes, it can. Alright.